I've handled a lot of animals, but when it comes to handling sharks, it's entirely different. Everything is on their terms. You're in their environment, plus they're incredibly unpredictable. At the Sea Life Aquarium in Melbourne, Chris is about to help extract semen from a white tip reef shark as a part of the aquarium's artificial insemination breeding program. Now this shark is out of its normal tank, stress levels are starting to rise, so we have to move quickly. Got to move double speed. Funny feeling today is going to be, well, different. Chris has been invited to the Sea Life Melbourne Aquarium for a shark encounter with a difference. Rob? Hey, Chris, how, how are, are you? How are you? Hey, good to see you. In the same, nice to meet you. Today, as part of Rob's team, I'm undertaking artificial insemination of sharks. It's safe to say they never taught us this at vet school. It sounds like you've got an interesting day planned. We do, Chris. Um, we'll catch a couple of these white tip reef sharks yep. that are just here. Uh, we'll get a male and a female and we'll bring them up to the lock. And with the males, we'll, we'll try and extract some semen. Uh, and then after we've done that, we'll examine the female, we'll ultrasound her, and then we'll probably put this semen into her. Okay. Aquarium vet Dr. Rob Jones is a world leader in shark artificial insemination. Today, we're going to inseminate one of our female sharks. And the idea is that through these procedures we develop the techniques that we can then use to save the endangered shark species. The main one that we're concerned with is the grey nurse shark which is critically endangered on the east coast of Australia and we're down to less than 1500 in the wild. There are only a very small number of grey nurse sharks in captivity so Chris and an aquarium dive team will enter the main tank and capture a male and female white tip reef shark. These sharks will be used as a surrogate species on which artificial insemination techniques can be perfected. I'm sure when I walk in here today, Rob's thinking, this has to be the first time Chris has ever caught a shark. It's not true. A little while ago, I had to pull a live shark out of Bronte Ocean Pool. That wasn't easy, but today I've got a funny feeling the sharks are gonna be bigger and possibly more of a challenge. John, this is Chris. Hey Chris, oh, yeah. all set to get suited up. You bet. Beautiful, beautiful. Chris is at the Sea Life Aquarium in Melbourne. This should just about do it, I reckon. Is that the biggest you've got? Yeah, you'd stretch out. They're pretty good at stretching. He's so, taking part in a groundbreaking a shark yeah, artificial right. insemination Fantastic. program. Fit you like a glove. Chris and a dive team led by John Lau will enter the aquarium's main tank to try and catch a male and female white tip reef shark. I've handled a lot of animals, but when it comes to handling sharks, it's entirely different. Everything is on their terms. You're in their environment, plus they're incredibly unpredictable. So today, there's going to be some tense moments. Great thing is, oh. now I look like a seal. <sighs> sharks hate seals, right? Once they've been caught, semen will be removed from the male shark and used to artificially inseminate the female. If successful, the hope is this insemination technique can then be used to breed the critically endangered grey nurse shark. Get this on now? Yep, let's yep. go. Once we've entered the tank, theoretically, the plan is simple. We locate the white tip shark. It should be sitting underneath a rock. That's its usual hiding place. From there, we give a bit of a tap on the nose. As it rushes out, net on front of it, net on the back of it. Hopefully, then we've caught a shark. The first shark to be caught will be the female. Fortunately for the team, it's an easy catch. Here they come. No, oh, you got it. Well done. Good on you, Chris. That's fantastic. The female will remain in the holding tank until the male is caught and his semen removed. But the male shark is proving much more difficult to capture. Sharks have been around for hundreds of millions of years for a reason. They're cluey and they can almost sense when something's not quite right. This shark's no different. The moment we start to surround it, it makes a run for it. The shark darts off, but he must be caught quickly before he becomes stressed. Finally, 
Chris and the team catch the shark. Once we can get one net around him, it's a matter of getting another net on top. And from there, he shouldn't be able to escape. The moment I grab hold of the net, I can really feel the raw power of the shark. He's thrashing around and clearly doesn't like his situation. He's got no idea what's coming next. Chris and John are carefully taking the feisty shark to a holding tank. Here they come. Where Dr Rob Jones and his veterinary team are waiting to begin the semen extraction procedure. Well done. Number two. Now that this shark is out of its normal tank, stress levels are starting to rise, so we have to move quickly. Got to move double speed. Just when you thought things couldn't get any more different, these are the examination gloves. Steel mesh. Your sharks bite. At the Sea Life Aquarium in Melbourne, Chris is about to help extract semen from a white tip reef shark as a part of the aquarium's artificial insemination breeding program. The reason we started getting involved in this process is the plight of the grain and the shark on the east coast of Australia. They are critically endangered, their numbers are diminishing, they're going to be extinct in 10 or 20 years time. Our goal with this process is to be able to be a contributing factor in saving the grey nurse shark. One question. Who is doing the act to get the sample? Yep, that will be me. Good. But we'll give you the Good. tube to put it in. <laughs> Jonathan Daly will be carrying out the delicate task. We might need another, another steering net. But first, the team must catch their sperm donor. Keep it in water. Keep it in water. Have you got it? No, nah, not yet. Well, I'm uh, taking you now. I've got a back end of him so he doesn't kick yep. as he comes out. Yep. OK, we're good to go. Yep. The team have just 10 minutes to perform the procedure. Any longer and they risk the shark becoming too stressed. So we've got some water running over his mouth there yep. with some oxygen. Okay. To keep him oxygenated while we work on this. Because normally you have to rely on swimming yep, to get the oxygen right. through his yep. yep. Now we've managed to get this shark stabilised, onto his back and oxygenated. It's time for John to work his magic. So, yep. so what we're doing is we're just feeling for the lower reproductive tract and just putting a little tiny bit of pressure on that. Yep. And then we're able just to, to express some sperm into our tube. That's it's pretty delicate at both ends now because obviously the front end's got the teeth but the back end's where all the action's happening and you just don't want him to move too much at the crucial moment. Yeah. We've done. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So it's really just a, a little tickle over the important part there. Yeah. Especially. And it stimulates him enough that he actually produces the, so are we the sperm there. Are we done, John? Yeah. We've got a good sample. That's great. Yeah. Oh wow. With the procedure now over, the shark can be released. Roll him towards us. Yep. And then on the count of three we let go. So okay. one, two, three. That's it. Beautiful. Well done. But before insemination, the sperm must be examined to make sure it's a live sample. So now the big test, huh? Yeah, we'll find out. Let's see how this looks under the microscope. One of the things we have to do is to actually mix the sperm with the salt water. Uh, that actually activates the sperm and wakes them up, and that replicates the actual mating process when the two sharks mate. Is there a certain percentage you're looking for of sperm that are actually moving? Then? Um, preferably up around 80 or 90 percent moving would be good. They look like long corkscrews. Hmm, they do, don't they? They're busy. Dancing. They're ready for action. Absolutely. At the moment I see all those twisty little guys doing their thing in there, I know it's going to happen. We're ready for the next step. OK, so same situation as before. Catch our shark, female this time, roll her over. Then you work your magic of a different kind. Yeah. yeah. OK, let's go. At the aquarium in Melbourne, Chris and the veterinary team need to catch a female white tip reef shark so she can be artificially inseminated. The thing I noticed straight away with this female is she's a lot bigger than the male, almost 50% bigger, which could mean 50% more of a challenge. Just 
Bros. You got that? Yeah. With the female now under control, the team will conduct an ultrasound of the shark's ovaries to make sure they're healthy. But they will have to work fast. So same rules here, 10 minutes? 10 minutes, yep. clock, clock is counting. All right, okay. Lots of water flow up the front, lots of oxygen. So the first thing we'll do is ultrasound it. Yeah. When we're working on the female, it's the same as the male. We set a ceiling of 10 minutes, and that's really for the welfare of the, the shark. So we're searching for the ovary now? Yeah, we're looking for the ovary. Yep. The fact is there's no point putting her through this whole procedure unless she's actually ovulated recently. If there are no eggs, there's nothing for the sperm to find. And just looking for follicles and... Yeah, and, yeah. egg follicles. So, if we can uh, see some good ovarian development, some yeah. good egg development, then we'll be putting the semen in. Yeah. Thankfully, the moment we look at the ovaries, we can see they've just ovulated. It's perfect timing. Five minutes, all right, the clock's counting down. We've okay. got to keep going. Okay. Right. So this is really the critical moment now. Yeah, time to inseminate. The shark has now been held for over five minutes. So we'll start by moving up the tube. Meaning that it's crucial the insemination takes place right now. Okay, she's just tensing up a bit. Okay, okay, here we go. Yeah, all right, in the right spot. With a simple push on the syringe, yep. that's it there. That's it, there we go. Semen's gone in, she's inseminated with not much time to go. Well, there we go. We'll roll it she's back in. over. You just point her away from the wall. With the procedure right, the now over, right. yeah, the that's... shark can be released back okay. into the tank. You all right? Yep, she's off. Cool. Well done. Well done. Good. Good right. job, mate. There we go. Very good. It's definitely not every day you get to inseminate oh. a shark. And in fact, we've probably only done it a handful of times. But Chris has actually uh, done very, very well and can be pretty proud of himself, actually, after today. Good yeah. stuff. Excellent. Job done. Yeah. The hope is that the shark will fall pregnant and eventually give birth to the aquarium's first ever shark pup to be born in captivity by artificial insemination. If it works, the program will help threaten shark species in the wild, in particular, the critically endangered grey nurse shark. That was an anxious time for all of us, but now it's another nervous wait for three or four months before we know if it's been successful, if she's pregnant. It's been eight weeks since Chris helped out with the shark insemination program at the Sea Life Aquarium in Melbourne. So this is really the critical moment now. Yeah, time to inseminate. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. All right, in the right spot. With a simple push on the syringe. Yeah. That's it there. That's it. There we go. The semen's gone in. She's inseminated. She's all right. Yep. She's off. Whew. Well done. Aquarium staff are yet to confirm if this shark is pregnant, but there is some good news. A baby shark in the nursery. Patricia is a small baby brown banded bamboo shark. She's the first shark born in Australia from artificial insemination. It's the first time in the world that that species has been bred with artificial insemination. And it's the first time for any shark or ray species that semen has been transported from one facility to another with a successful insemination and a live birth. Dr Rob Jones and his team are keeping their fingers crossed that there will be more babies on the way. Look, the fact that we've, we've had this success with this brown banded bamboo shark means that when we did the white tips with Chris here, we can now be a lot more optimistic about the outcome of that insemination.